In this video, I have a good conversation with one of our students, Brian, who is taking massive action and getting some incredible results. He recently launched 10 lead generation websites. One of them is getting three calls per day on average. He has a client for that site. He's making some money. Now, when you start any type of business, one of the main things it comes down to for your success is your mindset and your attitude. I just wanted to share this interview so you can learn exactly what Brian is doing, how he took massive action, and how he's making this training program work. Hey, Brian, you there? What's up, James? You can hear me? Yeah, you're coming in loud and clear. We did it. Very nice, very nice. So we are live. It's usually half the battle is getting IT stuff working right. <laughs> exactly. Well, I appreciate you jumping on. Yes, sir. I'm glad to be here. Happy to help. First things first, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into our training and stuff like what's your background? Did you ever do internet marketing or other training before? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I live down in Texas, just outside of Houston. Um, my whole professional career has been in medical sales, but I've always had an itch for uh, just doing something on the side. And in the past, I would dabble with uh, some SEO stuff. Um, but I never really did feel like I could do both of them effectively at the same time. So I would always kind of leave the SEO stuff on the side and go back focusing on my regular work. When the COVID thing came about and I'm at home with all this amount of time on my hands and can't go call customers, it was a good chance for me to kind of scratch that itch again. And that's when I found you online. And, I, you know, everybody knows there's a lot of different opportunities and people you can learn from if you search long enough. But I just, I liked your delivery style and some of your YouTube videos and I felt like, hey, this is a guy I connect with. And, um, and I'm glad I did because you've helped me tremendously, you and your team above and beyond just the regular training. Um, so that's how I found you. Um, I found the, the training was straightforward. I liked the fact that it wasn't two hour videos. It was broken up into segments. That makes it a lot easier to, to work through the progress and to digest it. For me, I realized very quickly what my strengths and weaknesses were. So. I did not want to slow down my process at all anywhere. I know I only have a short window to really focus on this right now. So if I got hung up on building websites, if I got hung up on something that I know is not my strength, then I outsourced it to you or whoever you recommend. And if it's in my wheelhouse, it's something I'm comfortable with and we're all good. So, uh, and just a short summary. So I've got 10 sites up at this point. Um, I've kind of put the freeze there and we're just letting those uh, continue to move up the rankings and I've got three or four customers that paying customers at this point as a result of the work we've done thus far. So your customers that you have now, those clients, how did you go about finding them? You have yeah, certain so, um, the first one and my best one I have, interestingly enough, is um, uh, one of the niches that I'm offering is kind of related to landscaping and he had a sign up in our neighborhood uh, quite a few signs he put up around our neighborhood. And I just thought to myself, man, here's a guy who likes to hustle. He's out putting signs up and he's looking for this particular business and he wants business. Seems like he can handle it. So it was just real easy to call him. And, and he has been by far the easiest one to work with. He's thrilled with the leads. I love him because he's paying me $20 a lead right now. It's not a, a monthly rental. It's just $20 a lead. And I asked him, I said, man, what if you don't close them? What if you don't get any business out of it. And, and he said, Bean, don't you dare worry about that. Your job is to make my phone ring. It's my job to close them. And I'm a closer. I'll close them. I'm like, beautiful. So, and that one's even turned into even better because he does more than just that one particular niche. So we'll start to build some other sites specifically for his other niches. But to your original question, I think what you teach, I'm not sure which course, if it's in the, set, the training, sales training course or the one up front, but it works beautifully. If you, whatever city you're in, whatever niche you're looking for, go to HomeAdvisor or go to who, uh, any other service that they're paying leads to. Um, those are people that are willing to pay for leads. They know the value of a lead, but they also know that they're paying people right now that they may not be that happy with, either because they're sharing the leads or they get the leads late. That's the thing I hear a lot is I'll get the lead, but it's a day late and I never really had a shot at it. And so when I tell them I'm giving you a lead that's going to call you directly live on the phone and I don't work for anybody else in this area, but you, that's music to their ears and it's made it a very smooth process. Yeah, it's exclusive and 
we find too, and a lot of students, and, and I'm very transparent about this, I think the hump in the road is when they try to go to find prospects, they don't have the sales background. So number one, they're intimidated to talk to people. So that's one thing. And that's why I really wanted to dig deep on the whole sales side of things because you're doing great with it. And, and I, I feel too, the mindset thing, like you're going to get people that just don't say yes. Like, you know, I've talked talk to plenty of potentials that say, no, I'm not interested. But when you could find someone that you connect with and there's a synergy there and they're already spending money on leads, especially the ones when they know they're not exclusive. Like you said, there's five contractors getting the same lead and you could say, Hey, I'm going to give you live transferred calls that are exclusive only to you. You start to open up the ear and I'm even willing to give you one or two for free just to prove to you because where are they going to go anyway? You know, the, the calls are going to get wasted anyway. If someone calls, um, I'm willing to prove to you that these leads are quality and then we could work out from there. And I think this will answer a lot. Of, I get this question a lot from other people. They go, James, how do we figure out how to price our website? when we start just getting calls. And the truth is you should start like what you did, find a lead price, find what home advisor is charging per lead and start with the lead price. And maybe two or three months you renegotiate because your site's also going to rank higher and higher. So you might only be getting, let's say 10 leads in the first month, but by your third or fourth month, you might be getting 20 leads. So you don't want to, you know, so you want to start with a price and whether it's $20 and every niche is going to be different. I know roofing, we were selling roofing leads for, for anywhere from about 75 to a hundred dollars and they were exclusive in our area. And from there, once you know the volume your site's getting, you have a good base to make a no brainer rental price. The only reason why I like the rental price is because you don't have to sit there and count how many qualified leads you're getting up. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of material there and a lot of things I'd like to comment on. Um, so great tips. I will tell you that, um, so I don't even know where to start. I agree hundred percent on the rental side. You can't really negotiate a rental number until you get a feel for how many leads you'll eventually be able to generate. I don't want to count leads either, but initially you kind of have to do that. Uh, so you'll get to that point where you can rent it out. But what I do with them is I prep them up front that like, eventually we're going to get to this point where it's not going to be as much background work or we're having to count the leads. We'll figure out what is a good, price point, we'll pay it monthly. And I, and I tell them, and I know this isn't really necessarily something they teach in sales school, but I've been in sales my whole life. And the most important thing is having a lot of trust with your customer. And there's not a lot of trust in this industry at all. They're not used to that. So I'm extremely honest with them. I said, man, this is something I'm doing on the side. I'm damn good at it. And I'm going to get you some really good leads. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not trying to retire off of you. I'm not trying to, you're not just another number to me. I want us to grow together. And I just asked that first guy, I said, you tell me honestly, what would you pay for a good lead? And I'll trust you. And he told me that number. And I said, number sounds fair. Let's roll. And if we need to adjust it at some point, we will. And he got that and he was cool with it. Um, so yeah, I had, I've forgotten the other couple of things I was going to mention, but um, oh, I would just say also have your confidence up when you call somebody. I know a lot of people, it's uncomfortable picking up the phone and calling them. But really remind yourself, you're bringing tremendous value to these guys. They need these leads. And that's not just something you're hearing on the webinars and the trainings. These guys crave these leads. And in fact, I've gotten to the point now where um, I'm getting a little bit more picky about who I work with, because if I send them some leads and they're not picking up the phone and they're going to a voicemail and the voicemail says you reached 832 blah, 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 and doesn't say the name of the company, or when I hear them on the phone and they're not that good on the phone, uh, I, I'll work with them a little while, but I won't hang with them that much. I'll move on to somebody else who, who knows their business, takes pride in it, can articulate it, and can close them. So you're looking for those kind of partners too. Don't, don't beg. Try to get the best partner out there for you because um, you've got the leverage because they need the leads. And you joined the training how long ago? About. Yes, it's been right when COVID hit, so right toward the end of March for us, I believe. So more, end of March. April, May, so June. probably like about a little over two months, almost three months around there. Yeah, right, right, right at three months, probably. Around about three months. And you launched 10 websites, was it? 
Yeah, I did 10. Um, of the 10, two of them, I was able to create my own GMB using my own address and using my dad's address in our local town. So those two are ahead of the other eight because I had the address and I could go ahead and order the citations. And, um, and so the other eight, I ordered, I outsourced the GMB work and I had to wait to get the addresses, which took a few weeks. And then once yeah. I got the addresses, I ordered the citation. So I mentioned that because two of my sites, one of them is anywhere between one to three already. The other one is on page two. And those are those original two where I, I launched earlier. The, the other sites are about 30 days behind and they're anywhere from page two to page five, pretty much across the board right now. And how many niches are you in? Ten um, different? No, 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 no. So I would say three, I'm dabbling in three. Let's put it that way. There's one outlier. Um, and I don't know if that's the best method to go about it. I, looking back on it now, there's two niches that I think really I'm very comfortable with and I'm comfortable with the, the partners in those niches and they're not that competitive and I could see a way to grow. One of the niches I chose was really an outlier. I was just curious more than anything else and there's not a whole lot of profit margin in it necessarily. So I don't know if I'll expand that one, but the other two seem like they have a good future. I'd love to get dialed in on just one or two for now and uh, really utilize the SEO research and the vernacular to grow those out. Yeah, once you're dabbling in some and then you see like where your money niche is, then I always tell people then you expand from there. And you could also leverage uh, not, not just your relationships that you already have, because a lot of people, when you build a relationship, sometimes they do other services. You could just expand your side. Yeah. Yeah. For an example, if you have a roofer and then they're like, we also do siding. Now you know, okay, we could also add siding in that area. And at least you got that one person that you know is paying you, that you trust. Because the truth is this, this is a real business concept. It takes work. It does take, take work. And when it, it takes work from setting up the site, getting your digital real estate up and ranking, getting your GMB verified, and even, you know, my hats are off to you, even when you hit that bump in the road, like I know some of your GMBs, you, have, you ran into a problem, and me too. I mean, everyone across the board's going to. You're going to have these. It comes down to mindset of not giving up. Because I know when you had your GMBs rank and you were saying like they were, there was leads coming in, correct? Yeah, so the GMBs are magic. I mean, there's no way around that. I mean, the ultimate world is you want to have your organic and your GMBs in sync and cranking so it's much more stable. But the reality is there's no way around it. Your organics aren't going to rank overnight. And um, so you got to work that process. But once they get there, they'll be more stable. But the GMBs are magic, especially depending on the niche. In the niche I'm in, people are on their phones, searching from their phones and they're pressing the call button. So overnight when the GMBs became active, first of all, it was pretty amazing how many of them were in the top three right when they became active, um, over half of them. And I'm getting phone calls the next day immediately. Um, so I had about a two and a half week stretch where the GMBs were really cranking out leads. And that's when I was able to find the customers and so we hit a little bit of a pause. Some of them got suspended. So we're just working through that. We'll get them back up and running. Uh, I would just say you're 100% right with the mindset. Um, and in some ways, you may even look at it as a positive because a lot of the people who you may be competing with, they'll quit at this point. Um, you know, we're not going to quit. We're going to keep going and we'll hit the peaks and valleys while we're waiting on the organic. So, you know, it's just, uh, just part of the business. Yeah, and also at Mindset, I, I get a lot of questions from active students and also people on the fence trying to look for something to do from home because a lot of people are home from COVID and they're saying, can this still work through this? And you're one that actually took action because of COVID, you're saying. That's what kind of leaped you into taking action and doing something. And you still are making it happen. You're able to connect with people who are still looking for a local business, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you think about it, it was actually a great time to get into this for a few different reasons, but a lot of us, the niche we're working on is home services, home repairs, home, anything home related. Um, because you don't have a brick and mortar, they got to come to the plate, to the site, and that's perfect for rank and rent to come to the home. And people are home right now looking at all the things that are jacked up in their house. They want to get fixed. And so the people, the contractors I'm talking to, they're seeing more business, not less. And uh, a, more people are calling, the demand is up. So it, like I said, it's all a mindset thing. You know, COVID affects everybody differently in different ways. 
in different industries, but the ones we're dabbling in, um, it actually is driving more business for them. So it's a great time to get into it. And some of your uh, sites, how many calls do you think you're getting if you had to right now about in like a 30 day span of per month? What do you think? What is your best yeah. performing? Well, I will, I, I will say this too. Something that I've got on my list to go edit and I haven't done it yet is I need to go into call rail and understand how to do the dynamic tracking so that I know where if the call is coming from an organic site or a GMB. Okay. And, and uh, I, I've got to get that down so I can better measure the metrics. But for my number one site, the one that's in the top three rankings and had his, has the GMB up in June, <laughs> uh, it's during that three week stretch, well, the GMB and that one's always been up. So yeah, we're averaging anywhere from two to four calls a day. Um, wow. That one's cranking them out. And that's with my good customer who likes, who's got no problem paying. In fact, he likes to pay cash, which is even better. <laughs> so, Great. Uh, but that one is the by far doing better than the other ones. Um, the other ones are not at the top organically yet, so I'm not getting anything from them. But the ones that were in the top three from the GMBs, um, it was safe to say I was getting at least one call a day from each one of those, each one of those cities. And the GMBs, did you get to go through fully and optimize them with like the training shows and everything? Yeah, I did. I, so, I mean, you helped me with that a little bit. I did have a couple of questions. Um, and the only piece that did not get done is getting a, a couple of reviews up. So these, yeah. these leads I'm getting, I didn't even have any reviews. Uh, and the other people in the top three did have reviews, but I was still getting that volume of calls. And so I can't help but wonder what it would have been if I'd had reviews. Uh, oh yeah, reviews are a big piece to the puzzle, not only to help you rank after a while, pop above people. I mean, you could also rank, we rank without reviews as well, but the conversion is much larger when you have that many more reviews than your competitors or something close. Definitely it helps. We see it across the board. Definitely dripping reviews in is, is a big piece of the puzzle. And then once you get your GMBs back and set up, you know, we have our process in place that we still will be doing so that that gets done. And I guarantee you're going to see your call volume go up. Um, your client will be very happy. Again, when it comes to the clients, it's just finding the right one that has the right synergy with you. Um, it's not always going to be the perfect match in the beginning. It's not always going to be the first person you talk to, but definitely you have to reach out. You know, if you're not reaching out, it's not going to happen on its own. Yeah, I'll give you one more little story for those of you who don't like picking up a phone, which uh, the way people communicate in this day and age, there's less and less people pick up a phone and talk. So I get that. Um, for one of the niches, an outlier niche that I was just researching, I think I shared this in the group, but just out of curiosity, one night I went to the GMB rankings for that particular niche in that city, scrolled down to the very bottom, uh, the ones that were ranking the worst, they have their phone numbers on there, and I just started texting them and just said, hey, new to this industry, I'm about to start generating some leads, but I don't really understand the industry. Do, are you in a position where you could take more leads? And if so, you know, what would you be willing to pay for a uh, exclusive lead? And it was just like a canned text, and I sent it to about six or seven people um, half of them responded and two of them were great candidates and one of them I'm working with now and wow. we did all of that by text yeah you see I mean thinking outside the box it's just again it's outreaching and I mean you have a little bit of a sales background so you know the importance of that it's a numbers game you have to you know be aggressive and listen you'll even see on your own websites that you're building you're going to have marketers calling these marketers, these other lead gens, like home and they are, they are roots. They will not stop calling. You could say, no, that's how they get people in the door. The home advisor is doing millions and millions and millions of dollars. We're just doing it. I feel just on a better way because we're so exclusive to a one niche in one city and we're not selling them to multiple people. So getting your foot in the door, building a relationship, being transparent, seeing what they'll pay in the beginning. Then once you see the volume your site's getting, especially if you have a site doing three or four good calls a day, now you know, okay, three months from now, let me talk to this guy again and come up with a no-brainer price that I like, that I could just put them on auto pay every month, whether that's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, depending on the niche and location and how many calls you're getting. But at least now you know the numbers, now you know what's fair. I tell this to people too, you don't wanna to try to take advantage of someone at 
at all either because those are the relationships that end up ending six months. Even if you were doing a good job getting them leads, they might not see it. They're going to be like, James, no, you know, we agreed on this. I really am not feeling comfortable paying that. And now you just burned a bridge when you could just put them on auto pay. It's really easy to maintain once our system's in place. So it's not like, you know, you're losing a lot of profits, even if someone's giving you a thousand a month and you just move on to the next site, you know, and you build that. That comes up with my next question. Where do you see yourself with this type of concept in six months to a year? Right. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I have some pretty aggressive goals, maybe a little bit above and beyond, you know, those that are just looking for a side hustle at home. Um, I have two sons that are ones in college, ones that's going to be a senior in high school and they're both very interested in income generation, revenue streams, they're business minded. So we're kind of going to, we're going to do this together and we are doing this together. So uh, where we want to be is the way we've, done our keyword research and the way we anticipate the revenue stream, we're going to start reinvesting the revenue back into building more properties. We're not taking anything out. And so we're a little bit tied to how fast we can generate. A lot of that's going to be based on how much gener uh, revenue we generate in the next two, three months. But our goal is, and I, you know, I don't know if this is too big of a goal or not, but we want to have 40 sites up and running all in our general geography, um, if possible. And, manage the cash flow in such a way that we can pay for the optimization, the site build out with dollars we're already generating here in the next 60 days. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So a family business, you're creating a little family business out of it. Yeah, man, I, I'm getting tired of paying that college bill. I'm like, man, you can learn more <laughs> right here, right now doing this type of course and learning a life skill than you'll learn in four years of college. And, and uh, I think right now where we're at right now, it's that shines more than ever. So, um, and you know, if you got a kid who's interested in it, I mean, that's, I mean, how cool is that? That you've got a skill that you can generate a relatively passive income at the speed you want and you're 18 years old. It's amazing. I mean, it's a really cool world to be in. Yeah. I mean, I remember I started my first business when I was about 17 or 18 and I knew nothing about the internet then it wasn't, you know, existing how it is now. I wish it did. I was getting actually into the home improvement niche and, starting a whole bunch of different things. And it was rough, man. You learn a lot when you start a business. But nowadays, I tell these teens, I'm like, the internet is right there. And yeah, there's a lot of crazy opportunities out there. You got to be careful. But if you just take it slow and just learn and, and hustle, there's so much opportunity out there, and especially with the right mindset. You're going to, no matter what business you start, there's going to be some hiccups. It's getting through that. You know, and that's the biggest probably passion of mine now is getting people through those bumps in the road because some people are so close and then they just get discouraged or they, they, they question too much. And it's take that leap and have some certainty, have some belief, go through the training, get yourself together, learn from other students like you, Brian. You know, that's why I want people to voice their tips, their tricks, what, what they're doing. And it's not rocket science. You know, when you hear this stuff, it's okay. This is what he's doing. He's, he's outreaching. He's using his voice. He's using his experience to get people on the phone and negotiate, negotiate, work something out. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And, and I think you're hundred percent correct that probably 90% of the people who want to go down this road, I would say at that first month or 60 day mark, they're going, to get they're going to get frustrated about something and they're going to quit or they're going to move on to something else. And we've all seen it and we've probably all been guilty of that to a certain extent. The biggest thing is work your, get your mind right where when, when you hit a bump in the road, you turn it into a negative. What is, there's a real popular book called The Obstacle is the Way, I think Ryan Holiday, but it's a great life lesson. If you can learn to overcome that hump, like when those GMBs cancel for me, um, you know, that would have been real easy for me to just throw my hands in there like this isn't a real business. And the no, it's, it's a positive. Like I can go rebuild them. Other guys are going to quit and I'm going to keep moving forward. And so you got to have that mindset. You'll never be able to do this effectively until you get to that point with your, uh, your mindset. Yeah. And the same day, some of your GMBs and you messaged me, they got hit. Actually, one of my probably a three month old GMB. Um, it's in a really major big city. We're putting some work into it. Same thing. Got hit too. Uh, 
listen, it's not a great feeling, but I know just like, believe me, I've been doing this for a while. This stuff happens. If I was to quit years ago, every time an algorithm changed and we didn't get through it, there would be no progress. So those changes sometimes are good too for us because it makes a lot of people, competitors, just not want to deal with it. You know, yeah. they don't want to deal with it. So it opens up just another opportunity door that just makes it even better. The, once we figure it out, there's always a solution. Google's yeah, not going. That's the way I look at it too. And then I can tell you the highs of hearing your phone beep when you get a call come in. My, my little call rail app going off every hour. I mean, that way outweighs whatever bump I hit with the GMBs. I mean, that you talk about cool. I'm in a meeting with a CNO, COO, top hospital system, and we're having a very high level discussion about some very important issues. And I'll be damned if I'm not looking over at my phone, watching my call rail app go off. And that's what's on my mind is what <laughs> it's, it's that kind of an adrenaline rush. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's great. I, I remember m the first rank and rent website that I built and, you know, I had the idea I was in SEO before that. So I had clients and stuff and clients are good too. Like with the skill, if there's someone out there that needs help, it's great. You can help them optimize their site. The thing just with clients, even though you're selling them a service, you put them on a monthly retainer. It's great, but they are more in control because they own that property. That's why I started transferring over to, okay, how can I own the property? I know that I'm getting people leads. Now let's turn them into leads that I own and then sell them. And I remember that first site once it started generating real leads and I could hear the calls. It's, it's definitely an exciting feeling because you know you're onto something. You know, you know you're on something and you're also helping another business out. As long as they could do their part, and that's out of our hands, is their part is getting the work done, doing quality, that's it. You have a, a good long-term relationship. Yeah, I love the way you said that. I take a lot of pride in helping these small town local community contractors grow their business, especially the guys that I just have learned to like. Like, I get as excited for them as I do for me. And, and, you know, when I see him, we high five each other, like, man, this is really cool. So uh, you're in, you be a true partner with them. And you'll have a long-term relationship. Yeah. And as long as it's, that's the key, as long as that relationship is solid on both sides, because it could happen too. It happened to me in the past where I thought I had a good partnership with someone. And then what happens is it ends up not going that well and it could not even be your fault it could just be they're not answering the calls you know they're not answering them correctly they're late to the estimates people are calling back this stuff happens and i'm transparent about that because i want people to understand don't panic when that happens just find someone else and once you find that right person you'll know because they'll take care of the leads the right way they want to grow their business that's the biggest thing if someone's telling you they don't want to grow that's, that's a no-go. It's not going to work because they're comfortable where they are. If yep. somebody's comfortable getting six roofing jobs per month and they're already doing six roofing jobs and they don't want any more, how are you going to give them more work? They're not, it's not going to work out. No matter how much you twist their arms and get them to even test it out, it's not a good potential. You want that guy that goes, yeah, I've been looking for someone like you. I, I want more leads. Yep. I want to grow. Are they quality? Yeah, let's, let's work this out. Let's be transparent. Let's start this from the beginning. Just like this, in three months, we could renegotiate if you want to do that. And sometimes maybe you don't. Maybe the lead price that you're doing turns into a system that you can create where you just charge them per lead forever and just keep generating leads. I agree. I, I was just going to say, man, I do. I, before we finish, I just want to say I really appreciate all your help. I, for those of you, I don't want to overwhelm you, James, but like I've reached out a few times when I had just a couple of probably beginner type questions and I got an answer back really quick. And that's really helpful because that's something that a newbie can get aggravated over something silly and just throw their hands in the air and quit. So I do appreciate you being real responsive. I mean, I appreciate you taking action, man. I mean, we get a lot of, it started getting overwhelming with the, the messaging from all the students. That's why we started putting new systems in place as their training was growing, just like anything else, we have to come up with solutions. So yeah, we get a lot of messages. Now I have some of my team helping me with that stuff. And we're trying to create things that just make the training and the community even better and working with the right people, having the right students, having the right people involved in the community to, to motivate each other. And that's one of the reasons why we're also doing these videos, not only to get, of course, the word out there, but also to show the other students, like there's other people that are doing things that you can learn from. 
you know, and I appreciate your time, Brian, as well. Before we wrap this up, is there any other tips you would give to any of the students? Man, we've covered a lot of ground and I think we've hit the most important ones for anybody in their first, you know, 60 to 90 days, for sure. Um, the, the one other tip, when we talk about calling a customer and you know they're using Home Advisor, don't go at it from the perspective that you're trying to replace Home Advisor. Just be real candid and, and the way that you develop a rapport with somebody is you don't challenge them. You actually come to them and say, hey, I, I need your advice. I'd like your thoughts on this. Tell me what your experience is and tell them, hey, I'm, I'm kind of new to this. I know I can do leads. I'm going to get you leads. But I'm kind of new at working with customers in your, your, your business. Help me understand this. And what happens a lot of times is you might come across somebody who actually likes their home advisor, but you need to let them know I'm not competing with them. Can you take more leads? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, then we'll work in conjunction with them. So it seems like a lot of people get hung up on the sales side and don't overcomplicate it. Be confident. Um, you've got something they want. Uh, and you'll see that once you get the hang of it. Um, as far as the, uh, the SEO, the build out, the only other major thing that really helped me was do not let yourself get stuck on something that you just don't like doing or you're not good at it. Hire somebody else to go do it um, and or figure out a way around it. But don't lose because you're just bogged down in something that's just not something you're comfortable with. You know, keep moving forward no matter what it is. If you have to hire somebody to do it, go do it. Yeah, I love it. And, you know, we show a lot of outsourcing inside there. You know, you have that option. I always encourage people, though, go through the training still so you know exactly what should be done. So just so you have a grasp on it. But, yeah, you could outsource a lot of things so you could keep yourself going. I mean, look at you, 10 sites. You had 10 GMBs, everything launched, massive action within three months, already getting calls. I mean, hats off to you, man. I really appreciate your hard work. I appreciate you jumping on and encouraging other people. And what if you had somebody that was on the fence about jumping in this type of training? What would you say to them if they had any questions for you? Like, should, we, should I do this? Is this a good time? What do you think of the training? Um, the training's easy. Uh, it's, like I said, it's in bite-sized chunks, which you can kind of, you go in the order they lay out, but you can manage your time and, and go through it as needed. So that's not, that's simple. Um, I would just ask yourself, are you truly motivated and dedicated to creating a revenue stream? And if you truly are, and you really are passionate about it, there's no reason not to do this. There's, there's, there's very little capital outlay to get up and running you're providing a service that everybody needs. And um, if you just have the mindset to be able to fight through whatever early hurdles you'll hit, you will get to your goal if you can just fight through that. So if, I'm, if you're on the fence and you truly want to generate a revenue, this works. There's a lot of people doing an incredible job with this. And don't feel like it's too competitive out there, like it's, there's too many people doing this. That's not the case at all. I, and all of my research I've come across I'm not going up against very many other rank and rent type people. So um, there's plenty of room out there. So if you really want it, it's just a matter of uh, going and doing it. Go get it. I appreciate it, Brian. I appreciate you. Thanks for jumping on. And I can't wait to have another one of these calls in about six months to a year sure. when you have family business going. I want to see where you guys are at, what goals you're hitting. I know you're going to do some amazing things. And I really appreciate your time. Absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, everybody have a good fourth. Thank you.